All right. Hello, Nick. How you doing, sir? Hey, can you hear me? Yep. How's it going, man? Oh shit. What happened? Oh. For a second, for a second you were there, then you disappeared and now you're back. Oh, oh we're here. You're here. You guys <laughs> you guys remained on this plane of existence. You didn't ask. Yes. Let's <laughs> yes. play morning goal every day. <laughs> So first of all, uh, we just wanted to, you know, say thank you for joining us, man. Thank you for reaching out and, you know, sharing your your uh, movie Hanky Panky with us. Uh, we really enjoyed it. Oh my God! Thank you so much for having me awesome. <laughs> and for and for enjoying it. Thank you. For <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it, just to kind of kick it off, if you want to go ahead for our audience, uh, if you just want to, you know, tell us who you are, um, a little bit about yourself, kind of what brought you up to making the film that you just recently made. Yeah, it's a good question is how did I become this way that I made this movie <laughs> which is so deranged. Um <laughs> uh my name is Nick Roth. I'm a I'm primarily a screenwriter. I'm from LA. Uh I've done some writing for for television. I wrote on a sitcom for a little while. M mostly right now I'm writing features, trying to write really weird ones. And so Hanky Panky sort of came out of uh I it was all developed by a very close group of friends. I co-directed it with my wife, Lindsay Hahn. Um, and we uh we really just like put it together out of the um fervent desire to get any to make a movie, to make whatever movie we could make. We just wanted to make a movie really badly. We had made a bunch of shorts together and we were like, let's make a let's make a feature film. And so we pooled our sort of like, well, what do we have? We have a cabin, uh, have this, we have this idea about a talking hat we have this weird camera and we have a group of friends who can act because we all <laughs> we pretty much all grew up in LA and so we were like we know enough people who can act we were like okay ensemble cabin com okay it's a horror it's a comedy horror movie in a cabin let's go <laughs> awesome hey. yeah, I mean, I, I'll let you guys ask some questions here well I first off once again like Tony said I thought that movie was amazing I genuinely loved it um it, first question is do you know seth green like how did you get him involved in this project yeah lynn's okay so uh seth is <laughs> we've been on this run set like we're, we're sort of we had we just started putting social media out there where seth is talking about his performance as the hat and yeah claiming, i saw it on instagram we saw an instagram post yeah <laughs> <laughs> claiming that look okay the hat oh here's here's the actual hat i have it it's right here here's the hat <laughs> It's a little worse for wear these days, but it's um so Seth is a voice in the film. His wife, Claire, is plays Kelly in the film. Okay. And uh and we've just all been friends for about ten or twelve years now. Lindsay and Claire met and became friends in a in a improv class they took, like more more than 10 years ago i don't remember exactly when it was and so then we just all hit it off and be, and we actually met ashley who plays diane through uh seth and claire they were already friends and so th like this was sort of like a, a a mishmash of a couple different friend groups that that came together to 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 get this movie made and uh, originally we like we didn't want to we didn't seth isn't in the movie mostly because we didn't want him to feel like we were just like trying to you know, he has a he's a much more famous person than the rest of us. And we were like, we don't want Seth to think we only want him in the movie for that. And then I think afterwards, I kind of think he felt left out. He was like, why didn't I get to be in the movie? <laughs> and so we were. I was like, well, I was kind of thinking in the back of my head the entire time that your Skeletor voice, which I know that you do from Robot Chicken, is perfect for the hat. So uh, it worked out. Yeah, the the first couple of lines he had, I was like, this sounds like Seth, and then as soon as I heard his laugh, I was like, "Yes, I recognize this laugh." <laughs> yeah, it's a he's a very talented voice actor. I could have probably gotten him to do a voice that like more masked the fact that it's him, but like it was in the script, it was Seth Green's Skeletor voice, yes, like yes. in my head, like that was just I, I, what the hat was always. <laughs> yeah, I did like in the uh, in in the Instagram. You know, he talked about how it was very difficult for him to lose the weight to get to the hat. <laughs> <laughs> there's like 45 more minutes of just him talking about it that's, that, that we couldn't you know fit into that that's very funny that's awesome <laughs> well i i liked um i really liked the the big introduction of comedy into the um into the movie uh, especially the the scene with um i think it's diana uh who has two faces 
Oh yeah, that's li- <laughs> the, the, no one okay. says anything up until then, and then it's like, oh my god, you could have just told me two minutes. <laughs> I, I about peed my pants laughing. I was like, yes, that's something I would have said. <laughs> it's it's so crazy to hear that because like okay, so you know, there's things when you make a movie, it's a very collaborative effort, and so there's things that I think work in the film, and there's things that I'm like, I don't know if. Like I was the, like, okay, I'll just say it, which is that like, I was like, I don't think we should do this head on the back of the face bit. I don't get it. It's, this is too crazy. It doesn't make any sense. Why are we doing this? And I was, it was like other people who were on the movie. I don't remember who exactly, I don't want to name who championed the back of the head. (laughs) But, um, we were just like, all right, we'll go for it. And then afterwards I was like, I wish I could cut this out. And too many other people were like, no, this is funny. You crazy person. (laughs) And so I'm no, I'm clearly you, wrong. You on could this have one. just said two faces. This, I would have got it. <laughs> <laughs> but I know I, I like the ire leading up to it. And then uh, and, and then the realization. <laughs> <laughs> Those two are so funny together. Also, that's uh, uh, Jacob Damani Finn and, and Christina Laske, who play Sam and Carla, who are like who have a very funny I, their their relationship that arcs throughout the movie. I think they 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 riff off each other really well. Mm hmm. I will say Carla and um, Diane are my f- two favorite characters in that mm. movie. Yeah. Um, Carla is always in most of the like in the early scenes, she's always pe- rolling a joint or just getting ready to get high. <laughs> and then in the ice shack, her and Cliff just get baked out of their minds, which yeah. I love the TARDIS ice shack, by the way. I thought that was a great decision. <laughs> it was it was just partly it was just made out of necessity. We were like, well, if we're going to film in this ice shack, it's got to be big but we're not gonna we can't build a big ice shack on this because the the exterior of the ice shack is you know it's just two walls but it's an actual frozen lake like it was not easy to build that thing and drag that out onto a frozen lake and and get it out there so it was like we were like it's got i guess it's i guess it's a tardis i guess it's just gonna have to be this way Do you hear ice cracking no that's fine that's fine (laughs) it was it was so frozen up there that we weren't even worried about that like that was nice. the least of our problems. <laughs> and I, I loved how uh, Diane always had a drink in her hand the moment she got into the cabin. Like, <laughs> even when she was in the bathroom reading the head, the nicotine medication, there's yeah. a glass of wine that she has to pick up off the floor. I was like, yes. <laughs> yeah, I think, I mean, you when you... When you're thinking about like economical ways to like identify characters, it's like having a prop or something that they always have or whatever. And I think Lindsay did a really great job sort of color coding the characters a little bit where they're not it's not like, you know, super. It's kind of like Clue where it's like there's like Mr. You know, Mr. Green or whatever. And like that Carla's almost always in blue. Diane's almost always in like purple or pink. Mm. and it just like helps you so she's okay so she's got weed and wearing purple <laughs> like okay i know who this <laughs> character is <laughs> um so i don't want to spoil too much because this movie doesn't come out until the 19th right i think it's fine you know what i mean like, <laughs> like <laughs> this movie's not so much about like i don't think anyone's going into this movie being like but what possibly could like i'm on the edge of my seat waiting to know what will happen you know what i mean it's like <laughs> It'd be like spoiling Caddyshack or something. Like the golf course <laughs> blows up. Okay, you can still go see the movie. Okay, <laughs> well, it's it's kind of like us when we we uh, we reviewed Cocaine Bear. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh yeah. That bear is gonna do cocaine and eat. That is it's, yeah. it is literally in the title. <laughs> um, yeah. My only question is my only unresolved question is what happened to Cliff? Because okay. He- great. Yeah, because he finds his wife dead in the snow and then just runs off into the forest and you never see him again. We shot an elaborate um, shot for shot parody of The Shining where Cliff goes crazy and he finds an axe and he's dragging it through the snow. And it's like it's like uh, Jack in The Shining in the labyrinth. And then uh, he freezes to death in the <laughs> snow in an exact. And, you know, in the editing room. It took a really long time to edit this movie. We had, we edited for years, and um, one of the things that was that you have to decide in the editing room is like what kind of humor works, what kind doesn't work, what kind of jokes or references do and and don't. Because we got we shot so much, and there was so much improv, and there was so much good stuff. Um, but one of the things that really had to go was a lot of the sort of like very meta stuff, the really like the really heavy heavy parody things that we did, where it was like 
too tongue in cheek, which sounds crazy because there's so much weird tongue in cheek sort of parody esque things in the movie. But the stuff like that, where it just. It didn't fit in the movie. It fit in the script, but it didn't fit in the movie once we once we had it put together. Mm -hmm. And so then you you sort of like are faced with the option of like, oh, well, what do we do? Because it is now a loose end. <laughs> what, like, and, and at some point you go, well, I think it's just going to have to be a loose end at the end of the movie. Because so, you know, like one one possibility is to like cut back to him at some point, just frozen in the snow. And um, <laughs> there's a good moment in the very last scene where they're like, Oh, I think I really did a great job for Cliff and Carla's marriage. It's like, oh, it is weird that their car's still here or whatever. And you could at that point just like cut with the music sting to him frozen and dead. Yeah. And um, still holding and, the axe. <laughs> yeah, still with, with an axe. I mean, <laughs> poor Anthony. It was like the hardest day of shooting. It was like five feet of snow and he was like, you know, dragging an axe through it for, you know, <laughs> um, and it's not even in the movie. Uh, but, it, you know, at the end of the day, it was like, no, that scene really is like it works as this like sweet moment at the end of this crazy thing. And it was and it just like I didn't want to disrupt that. And then so it's like, OK, you could put that in at the end of the end credits. And I was like, no, you know what? I think I want Cliff in the sequel. So I'm just going to get rid of this, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Always keep them guessing. That's what you got to do. So but thank you for sitting... paying attention so closely that you noticed that, that is not addressed. <laughs> so when you have when you have like, you know, that much comedy and, and I've, you know, kind of always wondered this with, you know, Will Ferrell, like an old school or, you know, like one or, um, you know, any kind of movie where they have a whole lot of improv. Like, how do you decide on on, you know, what's awesome to go in and what flows like that? That's that seems like probably one of the hardest jobs, even after even outside of shooting. I think that's a big part of what took so long in the editing room was just that uh, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, Lindsay and I edited the movie together and we had never edited a feature before and we were editing this in our spare time. Um, and so it, it was. It's pretty hard. You just kind of like have to try things. And and I mean, my 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 approach was cut it way too long the first cut of the movie was three hours long and then just keep cutting down like i don't know there's like some great it's like michelangelo was like how did you carve david or whatever and he was like i just cut away all the stone that wasn't david or whatever <laughs> and so like, you know it's you start with a big old block of marble and you just cut away everything that's not the movie what's not hanky panky and then, um, you end up with uh, the masterpiece at the end of it now I, I get a question. So kind of more on the technical end, like that. Like, um, so you said you know it took a, a long time to edit. Uh, what was the actual shoot time for the for the film? Like, how long did you take to actually do the the pre production and production portion of it? There is disagreement on how we all remember it slightly differently. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it, okay, we came up with the film and shot it real pretty and pretty quickly. So writing and prep and development was fast. That was we came up with it in summer. Like it was so it was probably like just the idea like, hey, let's make a movie was like June and we were shooting by January. Um, we knew we had to shoot in winter break because that's when we could get avail the availability of people who didn't have any other jobs and um, and also the snow that we knew we would want. So we were always like we could shoot this in, in like prep it in December, shoot it in January, based the first couple weeks of January. OK, so. That's I mean, we there was a lot of collaboration in the in the writing and development um where we did lots of like theater games with each other and like put together a whole sort of weekend where we all kind of like developed the characters together did improv based on the characters like you're snowed in go and that was a really good way of just seeing like who which characters made sense to be in scenes together mm -hmm. and then and then that mostly got thrown away for actor availability and those are the scenes <laughs> that got uh those are the characters who got scenes together but um yeah, so we it was just a few months that we okay. basically prepped it. And then we shot it in the main shoot was three weeks. Everybody remembers differently how many days a week we were shooting. <laughs> I was like, I thought we got weekends. And Lindsay was like, no, we shot six day weeks on this. So uh, it was a blur, but it was about mm, 15 to 18 days for the main shoot of it. Okay. And then we did shoot a couple of pickup days. 
um, in LA later, which was that's so like the interior of the ice shack that looks totally different <laughs> and the, and the interior of the black bathroom and stuff like that. That's just, that's just, that's just my house. <laughs> like we shut that, <laughs> we shut that here later. Yeah. It sounds almost like when you brought up about, you know, like getting everybody together before you, the actual shoot and kind of just playing the parts out and stuff kind of sounds almost like a workshop retreat kind of thing that some yeah. uh, places do. Yes, exactly. I think like, uh, oh God, like Mike Nichols does a lot of this or whatever. Like it was, <laughs> it was, it was a lot of, um, you know, uh, at the actors getting like a say in their characters mm -hmm. and getting developed, like what would be fun to play. And, and, and I think that that makes it, um, you know, I think you can feel that they're like more like authentically them. Because yeah. I was, was going to say, it can also give them the feeling of being more invested into the character too. Yeah. And they're all, I mean, we're all, the whole main cast is also producers on this. So if we mm. win best, uh, best picture at the Oscars, like they'll all, we'll all there have you to go. go. <laughs> yeah. Well, and plus it's also way better to make those decisions prior than when you're in the middle of a shoot and they're like, you know what? I don't think my, why would my character do this? Or I think my character would do this. You're like, Hey, we're, we're in the middle of shooting. We got 18 days. <laughs> there, but nevertheless, there was quite a bit of that because this, the initial script that I wrote didn't make a lot of sense. I wrote it too fast. Um, and so it was very much like rewriting on the fly. I was rewriting things the night before. And then we were, and like Toby, who is a, a really important collaborator, Toby Bryan, who is the, he plays Norm, but he's also, the, he, you know, made the puppet. I mean, made the puppets. He made this hat and he puppeteered the napkin. Um, and he's the voice of Woody as well. Uh, Toby, like Toby's role on set uh, at times was to be like, none of this makes logical sense can you work a little harder to make logical sense and i was like we're in the middle of okay okay let's let's see what we can do <laughs> sir we're gonna need you to do better <laughs> yeah when you toby, definite, you toby was pushing on that <laughs> which is important you need that person on set toby's one of my he's one of my Lindsay's oldest friends <laughs> Well, and you said too, you said the, you know, you wrote the script pretty fast, the original script. Um, and then also your original cut was like three hours long. What was the length of the original script? Cause like we always try to give, you know, the viewers and the yeah. listeners a little bit of education. The rule of thumb, you know, in, in the industry is like a page per minute. So like one page of script per minute, but a lot of times that, you know, exceeds or, or isn't as much. So what was your original script size? Yeah. I struggle with the one page per minute thing. It yeah, turns it's out. Hard. Um, <clears throat> Uh, I think the original script was 110, okay. um, which so it was already it should have been 95 probably for a movie yeah. like this. But the thinking was, you know, we'll shoot a little bit too much. It's a comedy. We went in like this is our first feature. We weren't super confident that we would, you know, edit that like tight movie to the 95. We were like, we better get a lot and see what doesn't work so we can cut it out. Yeah. Um, and then we were overly ambitious about how fast we could shoot it was a, it was very hard to shoot that many pages um with no crew like that was the real prop like <laughs> we were just because a lot of us have worked in tv before where you have this like unbelievable streamlined crew and you're just like oh so it's a five page it's five pages today that's light right we okay we got it eight pages today slightly heavy so we kind of scheduled it a little overconfidently thinking we could shoot at that pace and uh you can't when you have like you need, you need you, if you don't have a crew it, it slows you down it turns out we learned <laughs> <laughs> well that's what it's all about we have a, a good friend of ours he used to be the the film commissioner here and start a film festival down here that we go to and uh he always said you know he's become huge in, in you know independent film and stuff and he always said, you know, just you got to make that first movie. You know, you just got to get through it regardless of whatever it turns out to be. You know, hopefully it's great, you know, or fun and people enjoy it and enjoy what the, you know, what you put into making it. Um, but no matter what the deal is, you, you got to get that first movie done. Just do it just to do it and get it going. That That is exactly what we we're hoping is like and, and what we were going for. Um just like we just just like hell or high water let's come out of this with a feature what was funny is like i in, because it took so long to edit like a lot of people just assumed that this fell apart and never was going to get finished <laughs> and like i remember i was at some point texting with one of our cinematographers because we had three different they're all great we had three different cinematographers because i couldn't get any of my dp friends to commit to a full month of working on this movie because nobody got paid and like 
but I could get three different friends to work for one week each, which was how we shot the film. <laughs> <laughs> and I texted one of them just to be like, hey, so we're done uh, with the movie. And we're blah, blah, blah. And he thought I was like, he thought I was doing a joke the entire time. He was like, ah, that's great. I'm so happy for us. And like assumed that it was fake. And then like was like, hey, are you coming to this like screening or whatever? And he was like, oh, what? It's a you've actually finished this movie. <laughs> So it's 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 unbelievable that it exists, even to the people that uh, that worked on it. That's uh, awesome. Did you do the screening in April to give it extra clout? <laughs> <laughs> April first, I promise, be there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, it, this if if this movie could only be an April Fool's Day movie, it, that would make sense. <laughs> <laughs> we need people to watch it on other days too. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly. Yes. Yeah, so. <laughs> Well, so um, it's coming out. You said the nineteenth. Uh, where where all is it going to be out on? If you so want. it's going to be so it's coming out initially on Apple, Amazon, Google, and then like all these other platforms that have funnier names that I don't like. It's like Hoopla and Voodoo Vandango, and uh, <laughs> they're all they're all great. Um, uh, but it'll so it'll be VOD for uh, four twenty weekend is the is okay. the idea. This is a fun way yeah, to celebrate friends. your <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great movie to watch, Stoned. <laughs> I think. Look, uh, I think it's it's you can watch this movie sober. Yes. And as I have thousands of times at this point, uh, but it probably will be. It won't be harmed by being on on drugs for it. <laughs> <laughs> I watched it sober to make my notes and give it an actual critique, but I did go back a couple of days later. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, thank you. That is that that's that's perfect. Yes. Really understand it, take notes, critique it once, then eat a bunch of mushrooms and watch yeah. it. Yeah. I want to um, see the other side yeah. of this film. <laughs> you got yeah. I took high notes this time and then he compared his sober notes to his high notes. <laughs> I think he yeah. actually went to the other plane with Harry the Hat. <laughs> you never want to do it the other way around because oh, yeah, if you no. get high and watch it first and then you watch it sober you'll be like, "What?" That that might freak you out, you know. This is a wildly different movie than I remember. <laughs> um, Just check that link again. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure I get to the right place. Um, you you brought up the character Norm, and I wanted to talk about him real quick. Um, was was it your decision or even just Toby's decision to be full frontal three times in this movie? Oh, the um, I think that was. A sort of collaborative group decision. Lindsay, you know, uh, has directed a bunch of shorts, and one of her one of her sort of things was she was like, I, in a, in a sort of historical correction, it's not there will be more. There must be at least or more male nudity than female nudity in anything that she directs, and I fully support this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> as as a just like there can be both, but. Mm -hmm. um, you know, especially when 60, you're 60 40 towards the dude yeah, yeah. or at <laughs> least 50 percent. and so in you know we were very much like this is such an intertextual and referential like horror film that's kind of about horror films and really so many other previous movies were on our mind and it's like i don't know at a certain point you're like i just don't want to it's been done it's not interesting to just like have there's so many boobs in horror movies mm. and it's yeah. like we were just like, that's not what this is. And also we're shooting it with our friends. So we just knew off the bat. It's like, this isn't a sexy mo movie. There's some, I mean, there's some stuff in it that's whatever, uh, a little sexy, but it's not like that's, this is not, if you're, if you're like, I want to see a horror movie where girls in bikinis are being chased in a forest and then <laughs> murdered. Like that's not, we were never going to make that. We didn't even want to parody that. We weren't engaging with that. Um, and so what, well, uh, uh, the question was, why do we see Toby's dick so much? Um <laughs> <laughs> that was just i mean I, i'd just, like to think i put it more politer than that but yeah 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 yeah, yeah. and honestly uh, good for toby that man is <laughs> he's a lucky dude <laughs> i think it was you know it was a choice that to i think toby i think it was probably toby's idea i don't i don't want to speak for him because i don't remember now if it was him who pitched the idea but i think there was definitely like you know we were like we want to create this sense of like unbelievably uncomfortable sort of incestual Oh, and you nailed cult, that. whatever was going on between <laughs> these two siblings. Um, and so it just made like made sense for him to be uh, nude there. Right. Like in that in the moment that that we first see him naked, it's the whole point is that it sort of disrupts 
yes. Sam and uh, Sam is like on trying to he's sort of in detective mode. He's trying to find out more information. He's like doesn't know what's happening. And we're sort of on on the journey with Sam at this point. And then like stuff keeps happening, whether it's murders or flying hats or or penises or whatever that is like <laughs> getting in the way of his ability to like just solve the mystery. And so what's the furthest we could go? Uh, it, I think it was probably Toby and Lindsay were like, you should just be, he should be completely naked. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. And then he just doesn't have clothes on later. Like that's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just sitting there know? playing guitar. No clothes on. I mean, at that point, why bother? Yeah. Yeah. He's been, yeah. I mean, he's not going to get, he's not going to put clothes back on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would take too much effort. <laughs> we only got 18 days to shoot this. Yeah. Scene. We putting clothes back on now. Yeah. We only had so many costume changes. That's why we just ran, <laughs> we ran out of our clothes budget. So we're just like, Toby's got to be naked. <laughs> Um, and another um, question. Um, so I know you said you are all friends in LA and that's where you grew up and you live. Where did you actually shoot? Where was this cabin? Was that up by oh, Tahoe? Utah. Oh, Utah. Um, so that's Lindsay's dad's cabin. Lindsay's dad, Jimmy Hahn, who also did the score for the movie. He's a composer and he uh, lives at least most of the time up in a in a, this secluded cabin in the in the very remote very high mountains of <laughs> of utah so we were that was sort of built into the initial idea was like we could shoot a movie in that cabin um and we were like well if we if we want to make a feature and we have and we have that cabin everything sort of like fell out of um fell out of that like the cabin it was a cabin first film and we were <laughs> we were like we could stay there while we while we shot it it's not a it's a great cabin it's not a huge cabin it's not it's very comfortable for a couple people it's not when there are like 10 people staying in it so it was basically like every room of that cabin had somebody crashing like on the floor or the couch or whatever um <laughs> which makes it hard to shoot because like that's your set too so it'd be like okay we have to get people in this room have to wake up early and dress <laughs> this set so that we can shoot in it because we're shooting in here today. So you can't sleep in. Nice. Nice. Um, and we shot the whole thing. There, not vacation. <laughs> I think I initially pitched it to my, our friends as being more of a vacation than it was. I was like, yeah. And then well, there'll be weekends. You guys go snowboarding on the weekends. And we'll like, um, there may have been a tiny bit of snowboarding, but it was, uh, it ended up being, it's actually quite a lot of work to, to make a whole feature with your friends. <laughs> and so I, I got no vacation. I know. I don't yeah. know. If <laughs> and then you're immediately like when you're done, like everybody else done shooting, they can go home. Now you got to edit and get that stuff. Yes. Too. Yes, that is true. I wasn't totally prepared mentally for how much more work happens afterwards. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> let me ask you this on those, because I, I, I like getting in the technical stuff as well is. Um, you know, when you said you, you know, we got it done, you started editing at any point during the movie, did you ever kind of look and begin cutting anything while you were shooting? Like, so at the end of the day or at the end of the week, shoot and uh, cut anything or just kind of wait. So like, like I said, a lot of us have worked in TV before where mm -hmm. that ha it's so streamlined that mm -hmm. that's happening. Like the, you shoot someone is you know, taking that footage and bringing it to your editor that day. Mm -hmm. They're putting the rough cut. And sometimes the next day you have, a scene put together that's maybe not finished or polished, right? That that never happened not once on Hanky Panky. And the reason is it was like we would shoot. I was doing the DIT. So it was like I was dumping the footage to hard drives at lunch. And then after we wrapped for the day, every day I was managing the data. And that took a lot of time and was basically like there was never going to be a moment for editing, right? Like that yeah. was just never going to happen up there. Um and it, so it wasn't until, you know, we got back and then weeks later that we were able to really start getting into the seeing what we should like. It was we I don't even think we looked at footage uh, while we were while we were up there, like not on the weekends, not nothing. Gotcha. OK, no, that's fair. I just like to because everybody's got their own, you know, their own process and stuff. And also you guys had a very small crew as well. Uh, so it's a little bit more yeah. difficult, like if you were focused on, you know, just directing and you could edit or have someone dumping that footage and then you could go back and edit it later. Uh, Obviously, that, that sounds wasn't so the great. <laughs> I think it's, is it, there's some big director. I forget who it is. Is it Judd Apatow? There's someone who like has his editor on set so that uh, like he doesn't move from a scene until he's seen like a rough cut of the, of the scene, like literally like they'll shoot it. And then it's, 
look at look at this look at a rough cut and be like okay i think we have it and then move on yeah i think i know um maybe obviously he's a big director to the indie world but i know kevin smith does that oh I'm yeah not, yeah he he does the editing every day at the end of the day uh but again he's got massive crews now he's got you know the funds right, and, and right. the crew amount of people to be able to get that done and an editor and a, yeah, 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 and an editor. Yeah. yeah, it's no longer just him and Ben in like a workshop. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I say that because I know Ben Affleck really well, so I can say just Ben. You and Benny. Yeah, yeah. So I want to make sure because we probably only get a little bit of time about ten um, minutes. About ten minutes. So yeah, so is there anything coming up that um, any other projects kind of in the works uh, that you're looking uh, to get going uh, while this one's being premiered? Well, look, I do have I, I have a lot of ideas uh, that are not in in full fruit. I really want to do a Jewish Hanukkah horror movie called Dreadel. That's something that's <laughs> high on my on my list of things that I'm thinking about writing next. But I'm also like at the moment, like honestly, finishing Hanky Panky made me so excited about the just the idea of Hanky Panky two. I now that I now like I'm like I think I'm gonna write Hanky Panky two right away, like <laughs> before the movie is successful or not. Because if the movie's not successful, then I think it will be very hard to write the sequel. So mm -hmm. if I'm gonna write it, I better write it now before it comes out. So Man, I think I gotta, that's I gotta, that's it. I gotta tell you what, there's a guy as as we're talking and we're talking to you and also you know seeing you as well. There's a guy out in LA that we got to meet, you know, in Florida Shane. that I think you guys would make a, an amazing movie together. Yeah. Uh, oh, Shane, our, our friend Shane. Shane Brady, man, he's he's got your same kind of like style, of like mm -hmm. you know, just your just the way you are. He, like he's, your whole vibe. Yeah, is him. <laughs> yeah. Like as soon as you popped on the screen, I'm like, oh my god, that reminds me of Shane. <laughs> like, All right, well, I love my whole vibe. So uh, introduce us. Yeah, yes. man, definitely, absolutely. Absolutely. We, we may see him this year. We're not sure. No, he's not um, coming out. Yeah, because we go to the, the Sunscreen Film Festival here um, mm. every April. It's at in a few weeks, uh, April 25th through the 28th. So um, we do the podcast there and get to interview people. That's how we kind of got to meet him. But yeah, definitely. He lives mainly in, in L.A., mm -hmm. if I remember correctly. Um, so if you want, I can check with him if you guys want. Yeah, you can send sometime. him my I info or whatever. And stuff. Sure. That um, sounds great. Speaking we just got into the oh sorry i was just gonna no, no, say no. that while Continue, we're on florida please. we just got we just i just heard we got into the orlando international film festival so i don't okay. know if we're screening there or what we're trying to this is brand new like i don't even know the details yet but um that will be our our florida premiere i guess awesome. oh, nice nice that is coming up at some point <clears throat> later this year well if you if you get another one you know, coming up for next year, or if you want to, you know, if this one, you know, get it in there, you know, like look up Sunscreen, Sunscreen Film Festival. It's in St. Petersburg, man. It's a, it's a really cool film yeah. festival. So I've heard of Sunscreen. Um, oh, have you? They yeah. actually have Sunscreen West out your way. So it's a, oh, it's maybe a, that's what I'm thinking. It's of. a partnership yeah. one. So it's basically, I think it was kind of co-founded by the same people, but different people run that one out there. So, but it's basically got the same principles to that this one does. Hmm. See. You kind of already answered this question, but have you submitted a hanky panky to any other film festivals outside of Orlando? You know, we submitted it to uh, a, a million and um, like the first round we were we really wanted to. God, I shouldn't even talk. <laughs> I shouldn't even say this. We really wanted to be at, at Slam Dance um, because we didn't get in, but because um, we had we had made a short that went to Slam Dance and we and the camera that we shot Hanky Panky on we won at Slam Dance with a short and then Slam Dance was like we we shot it nearby, like we were like ah oh, and we had such a good time at Slam Dance we were like we want to come back with a movie, um, and so like the first round of places were like we'll we'll apply to places that were like we really wanted to go like Slam Dance and stuff and then when we didn't get in we sort of we're like okay let's just have fun and go to a million different festivals so we've screened it a bunch in in, in mostly in L A so that we can. I actually later today, um, uh, this afternoon, I'm go I'm going to the Los Angeles Cinema Festival of Hollywood, which is nice. screening us at twelve thirty. Um, oh, nice! And and so, or not when this airs, <laughs> listener. I'm sorry, ignored the time. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah. So we've been at a, at a lot of fun little ones and sort of had a good time screening it. It's it's really fun to watch it with strangers who have no idea what they're in for. We, there was one <laughs> festival we went to the Golden State Film Festival, which was a lot of fun. And they pair shorts with the features, which I think is always great at festivals because at least that's somebody who comes to see your movie is the people who made the short, right? And so, but the short that they paired Hanky with, Hanky Panky with was this very serious uh, and good drama 
like a drama short, not funny. Uh, a father daughter piece. It's revealed that the daughter is has been killed, and he's talking to her ghost, but like not in a fun supernatural way, in like a heartbreaking way. Mm. <laughs> so oh. you watch this like very serious short with those filmmakers who made that short, and like then Hanky Panky just immediately starts afterwards, and we're like, <laughs> this is there's going to prepare yourselves for a tone shift. <laughs> what do you say? Uh, it's awesome, man. They were, and then afterwards they were like, it was great. It helped lighten the mood, and very quickly after, after you know, uh, it's a good palate cleanser after something dark and serious. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's really cool, man. And uh, I just want to make sure we got enough time to do any closings and everything. But um, you know, again, we really enjoyed the movie. Thank you again for letting us yes. letting us view it. Um, we'll it's probably, a good honor. Yeah, definitely want to check it out again. And also, you know, going forward, you know, now we get your kind of contact info and you matched up with, uh, is it, how do you pronounce her name? Ar Ariane? Ariane? Is that how you pronounce Yeah, Ariane. Ariane? Ariane. Okay, so, you know, what we'd like to do, if you don't mind, is maybe, you know, in a couple months or whatever, maybe have you back on. Uh, you can give it. us some updates on how the how the streaming's been going for you. And if you got anything else going on, uh, starting up. <laughs> That'll be a fun update if it goes badly. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody watched the film. <laughs> how was Hanky Panky? Well, yeah. uh, <laughs> I will be your local PR person. Yes, I'm yes. going to <laughs> yeah. pump up this movie. It's amazing. I think, uh, you know, thank you so much. I think it's going to, I'm hoping people will discover it on, on VOD. And then uh, eventually there's no deal yet, but eventually I think it would be, it probably the, the place most things like this end up is then on, on AVOD, on advertised mm. free streaming, which I, I'm looking forward to because I think it'll be very funny to see ads in the middle of Hanky Panky. Mm -hmm. um, and I think when it's like it's free with ads, that's probably the time. I'm sort of hopeful that's where a lot of people will discover it. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I just I mean, imagine you're watching a scene, the hats having an orgasm or the napkins having an orgasm, cleaning up a mess. And it's like the all new fully loaded Honda Santa Fe comes with yeah. like, <laughs> a four wheel drive and <laughs> whatever. And then it's back to like the a they, napkin or, yeah. coming or they cut to they cut to bounce static remover. Time. Yeah. <laughs> Fun fact, the first note I wrote down for this movie was that handkerchief is thirsty slash horny for messes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You immediately pick up on what you're trying to go for with that character nice but uh, <laughs> also if you want because we're this episode so we record you know on sundays uh we launch on every wednesday on all okay. our platforms so um if you could before then or, or ariane if one of you two uh send us also any links you may have email us links that way when we post we'll this do. up on our social media uh we can add that as well to there so that, that way we can let people know where to find it sounds great are you is this going up this wednesday Yes, yes, sir. Yep. Great. Okay. So I'll I'll get on that right away. Awesome, man. Well, again, Nick, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we look forward to having you back on again, you know, in a couple of so months. Excited to to. Give us some updates and whatnot. And uh, and we'll definitely let people know uh where to find you at. You know, we'll get those links out and post it up on our post uh for this Wednesday's launch. Appreciate that so much. Thank you guys so much for having me. Oh, thank, uh, thank, uh, thank you. Thank you for our honor. <laughs> yes, yeah. Thank you for letting us watch the movie. And good look at oh, the festival God. today. Yeah. Oh yeah, thanks. I, it, it's very possible I'm I'm watching that movie in a theater by myself because I don't know how well I promoted it and I don't know how well the festival promoted it. So it's like I could just walk in there and just be be in a movie theater watching my movie. Well, just make sure to break the hat. Yes, I I, I usually do bring the hat and then regret it. I'm like, what am I doing with this hat? <laughs> All right, man. Well, before we get cut off manually, yeah. I want to make sure <laughs> yeah. that we do a good close. And so again, thanks. Uh, we'll talk to you soon. Uh, send us out that email with those links and we'll get that out Good. to everybody. Thank you guys so much. This was a lot of fun. Awesome, yeah, thank man. Thank you. Talk to you Have soon. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. All right. So that was uh, Mr. Nick Roth. Yes. Uh, we talked about Hanky Panky. Which is coming out on, on April 19th. Yep. Um, to video on demand, which is you know you you know, you rent it or buy it for three to five dollars on Amazon, Apple, Google. Um, I highly suggest you guys, whoever is listening slash watching this, log on to Amazon or Google or Apple if you have to, mm -hmm. and rent it and watch this movie. Yeah, it's weird as fuck, but it's amazing. <laughs> and as you heard in the in the interview, there is a gentleman who is full frontal. Not once, not twice, but three times in this movie. Yes. So be prepared. Um, it was and the highlight of Patrick's movie. Yep. <laughs> don't know if it was the highlight. 
<laughs> and we're also hoping he will do the sequel to find out what really happened to Cliff. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> Norm is dead. We won't see any, any more of Norm. Well, if it's a horror movie, we all know that people come back from the dead. The yeah. Revenge of Norm, The Return of Norm. Yeah, exactly. Cliff Nick, if versus you're listening, Norm. <laughs> Cliff versus Norm. Yeah. Well, they had Freddy versus Jason. That's I mean, true. You, know, you, can, you can do a whole big thing. You know, that's the beauty of doing a horror comedy is you know Norm King movie. of the um, King of the Hanky Panky. Yeah. <laughs> well, with like you know horror movies, you know people can always come back because mm. it's a horror movie. And when you have a comedy, you can be as goofy as you want to make people come back, even when it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Or, you know, you could just do, you know, even if he, he wants to put him in Hanky Panky 2, you could do an ending of that of, you know, a, a little short because they've done a lot of shorts, uh, Hanky Panky the Cliff Notes. Mm. <laughs> you know, just, just keep it short. <laughs> but just release five of them so it equals one full length. Right, yeah, exactly. It's all episodes. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think uh, I, he was... Someone called Netflix. <laughs> Well, he, I think he was great, man. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, just, yeah. I said it to him like when we were recording with him. You know, he's he's got that 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 cool vibe, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. that kind of chill vibe. And now, now that I go back, if we read the first email when he first reached out to us, um, I can definitely put two and two together as to who he is. Because mm. when he was reading it, you know, when he sent us the email, he's like, you know, check this out. You know, he was very open about the thing. I've I've got it here actually. I can pull it up for you. Yeah, so yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm going to read the email here for you guys. This was really cool. Did we um, sign an NDA? Trying to remember. <laughs> no. NDA. Oh, well, I hope not because I put that deal on my personal Instagram account. <laughs> no, he said, uh, you know, I'm a TV. Hey guys, I'm a TV writer and filmmaker. You know, with a mo- with a new movie, and I'd love to have you know be a guest on your podcast uh, to promote its release. Uh, but also, just generally, I think. Um, I think I do a mean podcast guest. Uh, I'm also a dad and a professor and a WGA uh, captain, and I'm famously always. Order the first best thing on the menu. <laughs> um, he, he, he explains the movies, and then when I said... Um, this has got to be his IMDb bio. Yeah. <laughs> so when I reached back out to him, when we first started talking, um, you know, I said, you know, how did you, you know, thank you. you know, we talked, and I said, you know, how did you hear about it? Just let us know so we could thank our, you know, networking community, or if, how, if we know where our growth is going, you know, based on where they found us. And he said, he gives us the information. He says, honestly, I just... Uh, uh, I just uh, stumbled upon your pod on the list uh, and threw it looked and though and thought it looked cool. Uh, so I listened to a recent episode, the one about on the seventies, and was like, "Yep, these guys are chill. <laughs> these guys seem chill." <laughs> so, you know, after reading those, but then getting to meet them, I'm like, "Yep, that's I, that's that's his vibe." Yeah, I <laughs> now I can read the email and I can see his face now saying that to us. So, but no, really, really, really cool. Uh, it was a good time. Uh, we enjoyed watching it. Oh yeah. Um, you know, and we got, it, was really, it was the first time we got like sent a screener for a film. Yeah, like please watch this so we can talk about it before the movie is even released. I think that was really cool. What? Well, not the first one, but it was one. <laughs> the one that well we reviewed mm. not that oh, long yeah, ago. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So that was a screener. Oh, even what? though it was on Tubi, it was still a screener. Oh, yeah, well, it was it was a screener. Yeah. Before, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought it was on Tubi, so anyone could watch it. Well, no, it was, but it's still technically we got the certain you know information to it. But yeah. basically, mm-hmm. yes, you are right, correct in the terms of yes, this has not been released yet. Yeah. So yes, that was really mm-hmm. cool. Um, we do have that other uh, guest. We got to uh, get on that sent us a link to hers as well, the screener to her short film. Yes, uh, I believe it was Catherine, if I remember correctly. So I'd have to dig up the email, <clears throat> but we'll. And once again, <clears throat> I don't even think it's her. I think it's another PR firm <clears throat> reaching out. We're getting pretty big for people who don't have ad revenue. This is get at us, advertisers. Yeah, Spotify. <clears throat> yeah, we know people now. Yeah, we're connected <laughs> in a real bad way. We're kind of a big deal. <laughs> in this of, recording studio. We're, yeah, we're kind of a big deal in a very small space. In this, yeah. in, in this area. We're just right here. <laughs> we're a small fish yeah. in a big pond. That's a, <clears throat> um, I will say, he did answer without even realizing it a question I did have because IMDB when I first looked up this movie said it was completed in 2014 or 2015 I was like this has the exact same cast and crew and that's the trailer that I watched before I watched this movie but it's not releasing for a month so I don't know what the hell is going on and then he explained in the interview that they finished but it took like five years to do the edit yeah. and which Tony you you were in the film industry is that 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 seems a little bit on the excessive side in my opinion 
I, it, it, but it, I mean, obviously, it when can you're be long. About, but when you're talking when you're about, you're the only one doing. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, when you're the only one doing, and like he said, also, so there are a couple differences between what normally would happen. Mm. So a lot of times, yes, you can spend up to a year editing mm. <clears throat> because sometimes <clears throat> you know you're working on other stuff. You can't just focus on that thing. Uh, so you have to kind of do it in the filling, kind of like what we do here. Mm. Um, but also, he even said it himself. So this is a direct quote from him. <clears throat> He was talking about it. he's like when he wrote the script he's like i wrote it fast and he didn't even really realize what he like what it was going to be mm. like he kind of just wrote this script mm-hmm. that, that's what he explained to us so he's like i didn't really know and then he's and then he said even when they were doing the editing he's like you know when we get into editing you know we didn't really know what we had and also like he said too after about two or three almost three weeks of shooting <clears throat> they didn't look at anything yeah until the end so basically then you have all this footage and you got to work on it but i'm assuming uh they were probably just between like hey this feels right this doesn't feel right might have been a good mm. question i should thought to ask him too is like what the what the reasoning behind the mm. length of time but yes that some people it can take that long okay um <coughs> when he said like i, I he said they were very busy um they were only up there for three weeks and you know no one would think they all had like the people in this room had to get up like at five o'clock in the morning because they had to start prepping the shoot that day um, shit, I lost my train of thought. Let's come back to me. <laughs> you know, everybody's shooting oh, different, and, uh, and, you know, and I don't and, know and, what and, I'm talking about. Know, <laughs> you know, the thing with the place. Figured it out. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I know he said, uh, you know, they were all very busy, they didn't have a whole lot of time, but it isn't, it's industry practice to at least watch, like, some sort of dailies at the end of the day or the beginning of the next day? Uh, again, you're, well, you're going into... So- that's also what he said was he didn't look at any of the yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't cut any of it. Well, well, my point is like, was it just like I, mean, I probably should have brought this up in the interview, but was that just because they had zero amount of time to dedicate to anything That's else? Besides what it sounded dealing? because he said at, at the at, during lunch and at the end of the shooting day, <clears throat> you're downloading all the footage to hard drive. So mm-hmm. what you're doing then, and this is probably a lot of prep work, which would have saved them a lot of time later is when you're downloading, it's not like, like we do an audio thing, you know, mm. in the video, it's pretty simple. We don't have a lot of, we don't have cuts or anything where we're doing different scenes on this mm. show. So for us, just clean up the sound or, you know, the picture a little bit and then throw it out there. Whereas with them, they have to look at it. So every second, they break it down to seconds. <clears throat> so when you're downloading footage for a movie, so you have like five second increments. So you have all these files and you have to label them like mm. literally name every one of them like clip scene one da, 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 time coded all this stuff for mm. every bit so if you've shot for 16 hours or eight hours or whatever the number is you have to that downloading takes forever okay. because you're also and i don't know if he just <clears throat> excuse me i don't know if he just downloaded the entire thing at once mm. and then went back through it but from what he's saying <clears throat> it sounds like that's how he went about it, it sounds gotcha. like he just said all right, you know, or even one minute clips, or maybe by scene, which was each scene was like five or seven minutes. So, but even when you shot for eight, nine hours, that's a yeah. lot of stuff to break so down. So, is, he kind of said, he's like, I just didn't have time at the end yeah. of the day. So, this is my it. lack of industry knowledge coming into play here. Like, that's I fine. didn't know if I didn't know downloading and even doing like a just a rough, like, get rid of the you know, before the clicker and the after the clicker, and then just watch like what you the raw footage. You, I didn't know it would take it was that consuming, yeah. Dang. That's why that's why movies take so long to do. That's why a lot of like if you have a, a like Hollywood and I'm, I'm let me rephrase if you have a studio budgeted movie because mm-hmm. um, there's a lot of really great Hollywood made independent films. But if you have a studio based movie, a lot of times you have multiple editors, not just for the different areas, not just like audio, video, and you know mm-hmm. special effects or whatever. <clears throat> you have. Probably anywhere between, and this is just a guess because obviously I haven't worked on a studio mm-hmm. budget mo- uh, movie before. Probably at least two to five people for mm-hmm. each of those, you know, sections. Oh, damn. So you probably got, and then you also have people that are just dedicated <clears throat> for those file downloads for naming it because, like I said, you're breaking it down into seconds. So you have to separate each clip. Okay, every ten seconds, you and you have systems that can do it. Mm-hmm. You say, how do you want this downloaded or broken up? And you could say in like one minute increments, you could break it down to like second increments if you wanted. But then each one of those has to be named. You mm. have to title them. So it's like, just think about that next time. Like you, you save a file that you do at home. You just name it real quick. But imagine doing that for nine hours of footage that are broken down into minute increments. Oh. 
So there's 60 minutes in an hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, Times nine. I, I quickly did some rough <laughs> back of the envelope math in my head. And 540 broke. files you have to name yeah. and and codec and all that good stuff. So Yeah, that broke me. <clears throat> so that could be a reason why. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And, and now that I have that context, this makes a lot of sense. <laughs> so, yeah, just the downloading. And, and he was wise to do that because, shit, trying to download that much at the end of it, if you shot 18 days worth of stuff and then downloaded It'd it later. It'd still be downloading, <laughs> probably. Yeah. <It's> good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. To the second. <laughs> it would be premiering April 19th of next year. Yeah, <laughs> the year after. <clears throat> no, but overall, uh, he seemed, uh, you know, I like this style of, of way he talked about it. He, he, Kind of strikes me as he, you know, he takes, you know, his filmmaking seriously, but mm. also he's relaxed about it as well. If that makes yeah. any kind of sense, like he's he's not one of those. Doesn't seem like he'd want to be one of those like hardcore directors. Like this is how it is, how it needs to be. It's yeah. my movie. He doesn't it. want to be the next Scorsese. <laughs> he just wanted to. He's like, I want to make a comedy horror movie. And I've got access to my wife's, uh, you know, parents' cabin. Fuck it, let's go. I'll write the script on the drive to Utah. <laughs> well, he even said it itself. Like he felt like he wrote the script a little bit too hastily, so he was constantly doing like updates, like the day or night before. So, um, but even if he was doing rewrites, like on set, the, I can only assume that the base that he was working with was mm. genuinely just as funny. Yeah, he's probably just cutting out things that really didn't like. Oh uh, yeah, flow. yeah. Like oh, we've got this great comedy scene right here, and now I'm doing a poop joke. So funny. Yeah. Not really relevant to the whole vibe of the film. Yeah. Just cut away everything that's not David. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, also it was a good time, man. We do we only got a couple minutes uh left here, but um just wanted to uh just say again to, to Nick for all the listeners, uh, you know, thanks again for joining us. You know, we had a really good time talking with him and uh definitely hope to have him back on. I know he seems yeah. pretty eager to wanna jump back on and let us know how Absolutely. things are going or, you know, whatever new projects he's got going on. Hopefully and, it's the sequel. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> Hanky pankies. <laughs> There's two hats now. <laughs> but we are about out of time. Two hats. <laughs> yeah. So again, guys, just remember check us out on all the social media platforms. Uh, check us out, you know, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Check us out on all the listening platforms: Spotify, Anchor, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Castbox, Overcast, all the other ones. iHeartRadio and all the good stuff. And come check us out on YouTube. This episode will be airing. Uh, we recorded today on the what is today seventh. Uh, so that'll be coming out this Wednesday, which would be the tenth. Am uh, I correct I on that? So. <clears throat> uh, yeah, yes. this is the 10th, because I thought it was coming out on the 11th. And I, was, the two. Yeah, I was really Plus hoping we like, at, at some point, <laughs> like, and you could watch it tomorrow, <clears throat> and then I quickly, like, oh, shit, 19th. Yeah. So a week after this episode goes live, you will be able to go on to Amazon or um, Apple, the places I named earlier, yeah. and rent or buy this movie and enjoy yeah. it. Yep, and we'll also, like I said, as long as he gets us the info, we'll yeah. post the links on our post that'll be coming out Tuesday, the day prior. And, uh, uh, even wins. like you know, he's a busy person. He's got <laughs> he's a professor. He's a filmmaker. He's a writer. Um, even if he doesn't send us direct links, I have a couple like from uh, IMDb, yeah. and um, I can post the YouTube channel. We will definitely be posting links to promote this movie in some form of fashion. Yep. And Ariane can get us that info too. Yeah, for yeah. some reason. So, but definitely check it out, guys. Uh, again, thank you so much for listening. Uh, talking with Nick Roth. Yeah. Um, so about really, hanky panky. About hanky panky. <laughs> um, all right, guys. But until Wednesday, when you get to hear this episode for Movie Talks and Chill, we're your hosts. I'm Tony Serrato. I'm Gavin Butts. I'm Patrick Wall. All right, guys. Take care. Let's see that movie at the Oscars one year. Yeah.